Hi everybody, I am Dr. Rena Shavla, Faculty for Obs and Gynae at Conceptual OBJ. Now this is a very very important session, examination of an obstetric patient. All of you, all OBG residents will be quizzed, will be asked to show a basic obstetric examination in your exam. Whether you're a MDMS candidate or whether you're a DNB student, this is a must know and you should not be fumbling on examination. Okay, when you're asked to examine your long case or in the grand rounds, you should be able to examine an obstetric patient. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. Okay. And this basic examination, if you cannot perform properly, then it's going to be a sad story. So it's very, very important that you do this and you do this as many times as possible when you're in the rounds, when you're seeing patients, you have so many patients, uh, pregnant patients who you can see and keep doing the examination so you refine your skills better and better and better. Okay. Now, when we talk about examination of obstetric patient, this includes both the general and the obstetric examination. Well, I'm not only going to focus on the obstetric examination, that of course is the more important part, but we always start with the vital signs and whether the patient is conscious, cooperative, what is her general status. So we start with the vital signs, okay? Now, the vital signs are basically including whether the patient is conscious, cooperative, and oriented to time, place, and person. Okay, that's the first thing we always see, right? The second thing is we check her vital signs and that includes the pulse rate, okay, the blood pressure, her temperature, okay, and the respiratory rate. Now, the pulse rate is very important. Why? Because Either bradycardia or tachycardia is of course not normal. Bradycardia can be physiological, but usually in pregnancy, the pulse rate will increase. However, persistent tachycardia or tachycardia, which is a significant, may be associated with blood loss, may be associated with septicemia, may be associated with, with, with her being having temp, having fever, or, or it may be a sign of heart disease. Okay, so the pulse is very important to be checked. Then the blood pressure. Very, very important in pregnancy because many times you're going to be given a case of preeclampsia or gestational hypertension or chronic hypertension. So, of course, the first thing we need to see is the blood pressure. Normally in pregnancy, the blood pressure will fall, especially in the second trimester. Okay, and the blood pressure will is very important to measure because uh, apart from hypertension, hypovolemic states, septic states can also cause hypotension. The temperature is very important. Okay, she should be afebrile. If she's febrile, if she's having a febrile illness, you need to know the reason why and it can affect the pregnancy. And of course, the respiratory rate is also normal. A respiratory rate which is higher or lower again can suggest some abnormality. Okay. So vital signs has to come as the first part of your examination and then you move on to general examination. Now general examination, there's a full head to toe examination which some examiners expect you to tell but there are a few important points that you should know. Okay, firstly, first is her look. Does she look well? Does she look poorly? Does she look malnourished? So the look, what is your initial look by seeing her? Okay, that will itself tell you a lot about her many things like her socioeconomic status so whether she's malnourished whether she is obese okay that is the general look of her then comes the pickle like in medicine you have pallid itrus lymphadenopathy okay clubbing cyanosis lymphadenopathy and edema amongst these six what are the most important in pregnancy which you can't afford to miss are pallor and edema these are the most important okay because pallor, you'll find more than 50% of, of our population is anemic and it's very important to diagnose anemia clinically. So on the lower palpebral conjunctiva, you're going to be looking for paleness. You're going to be looking at the palms of the hand, the nail beds, okay, mucosal membranes. All these will tell you whether she is anemic or not. And the second most important one is edema. Edema, how do we check for edema? We look for bilateral pitting edema on the lower limbs okay so where do you look for 
uh, edema usually we look on the dorsum of the foot or just above the medial malleolus okay or the, on the ankle that's where you press for 15 to 20 seconds and when you leave your finger or your thumb you feel you see a depression okay so that is bilateral pitting edema now edema can be physiological in in fact in many patients it will be physiological in pregnancy but again in preeclampsia it may be seen however it's not used for diagnosis of preeclampsia so it could be physiological but we're also worried about preeclampsia or heart failure cardi cardiac failure so those are other important causes so pallor edema are a must okay the remaining part of pickle icterus okay clubbing cyanosis lymphadenopathy these are the remaining parts right these are important depending on the case okay so even if you miss icterus or clubbing in a normal pregnancy case your previous is there and you're examining but if you're examining a patient with heart disease clubbing and cyanosis become important if you're examining a patient with known pulmonary tuberculosis or known tuberculosis lymphadenopathy becomes important or maybe a known malignancy who's come with pregnancy if she's a case of liver dis disorder in pregnancy aflp or ihcp hepatic cholestasis or viral hepatitis then again ictus or even maybe preeclampsia and preeclampsia ictus is important because help syndrome may have mild they may be mild jaundice in patients who have help syndrome so ictus becomes important there so see what you're doing some patients some examiners will expect you to answer all of them but I as an examiner will make sure that you're at least telling me whether there is pallor the general outlook of the patient whether there is pallor whether there is fetal edema and two most important things are examining the breast in the pregnant patient why is the breast so so important because you have to diagnose whether there is an inverted nipple in the prenatal period so you can try to correct it using the inverted syringe technique teach the patient how she has to suction out the nipple and this is very important because it's very very um, sometimes what happens this is ignored it's missed and at the time of feeding the baby you realize there's an inverted nipple and the patient is struggling to feed the baby at that time so make the patient aware teach her how to suction out the nipple and correct this as much as possible before she actually delivers also you have to of course examine the breast in total look for any lump or palpable mass or any axillary lymphadenopathy there may be an axillary tail of the breast which may become engorged during breastfeeding so these things should be there many times many many times in fact we have diagnosed breast cancer during pregnancy because that's the time we've examined and found a lump so very important to look at the breast and the second important thing is to look for a palpable thyroid gland okay so if you're able to palpate the thyroid gland this needs to be evaluated further so get a thyroid function test done goiter is endemic in our country so this should not be missed so a palpable thyroid gland and breast examination have to be done in pregnancy okay and this is part of your general examination